Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. Hey, how y'all doing? Got two rabbis here. <laughs> how you doing, sweetheart? Hello, hello. I need a smile, huh? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hello, hello. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Good to see you, man. <laughs> hey, Bob. Hey, John, how are you? Man, look at y'all, huh? Yeah. All right, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> y'all, welcome. Welcome to my home kitchen. What a fantastic crowd. Thanks so much for being here. And y'all, I want to introduce Dr. Craig Walker from Homer, Louisiana, that great little Cajun town way back on the bayous. Uh, going toward Grand Isle, Louisiana. And Craig is one of Louisiana's top cardiologists. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And Craig sent me one of the uh, many recipes that I'm working with to try to modify just a little bit to make them, uh, should I say heart healthy? It is certainly heart healthy. Uh, uh, just to try to make our Louisiana food a little bit better for us. And he and I are going to talk a lot about why our foods are, aren't always great, even though they taste great. So I went to his gorgeous kitchen. Oh, what a kitchen, y'all. You're going to see it in a minute. And he and I talked a little bit. We grilled a little bit. Well, hey, come on and visit with us, and you'll see exactly what we did. Hey, nice to have y'all here. Today. I met Dr. Craig Walker back in the early 90s, and today I'm at his beautiful home built on the banks of Bayou Black in Homa, Louisiana. It was this cardiologist who first made me realize that we are what we eat, and all of the heart disease found in the world can be traced back to our cooking. And Louisiana cooking is a good example of it. This doesn't look like the garden of a cardiologist. This is like the garden of a, of a country boy here. Yeah, I was a farm boy, John. <laughs> Dr. Craig Walker grew up in a typical Cajun family in South Louisiana, and as one of the nation's leading cardiologists, is constantly concerned with proper diet. Craig's an avid fisherman, and when he's not seeing patients or lecturing about heart disease around the globe, you can find him in the kitchen or over the grill. Yes, a cardiologist who loves to cook and eat. Today we're grilling mahi-mahi while preparing to create a grilled fish salad. Look at the grill marks on that, and that nice charred flavor. Well, Craig, we have two things here. We have the healthy version of our fish, the wahoo, which is perfectly flavored. A little fresh cracked pepper on that would be beautiful. To eat as is, or maybe make a nice salad out of it. And right here, I have what I would consider the unhealthy version of fish. That, that is my, uh, my grilled catfish that has the same flavors of that. Mm -hmm. The only difference is we've moved it into a uh, is unhealthy the right word? <laughs> well, it, it certainly has some elements in itself. It's certainly a little bit more fat, some more yeah. saturated fat. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead. I'm going to make a nice mold here to show everybody how we did it. So you're ready. Why don't you throw in that, uh, well, a cup and a half of man there. Okay? Yeah, that's, to start with, that's got a lot of fats in it, of course. And it's got some of the egg yolks and things which we know to be loaded with actually cholesterol as well as saturated fat. Ah, so but barter, pe barter people love it, huh? For sure, for sure. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna put a little sour cream. You have some right next to you there. Yes. Like as if this isn't enough. <laughs> yeah. Let's put about half of the sour cream in there. Okay. That would be great. There we go. Well, People like, already calling to find out what we're cooking, John. <laughs> yeah, they, they, heard we, they heard we were uh, we were cooking fish. 
Okay, now we have a little sour cream and then yes. more fat again, right? Yes. Now, so basically we've taken a pretty good fish, mm -hmm. grilled catfish that was grilled with nice olive oil and herbs. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We take it and we start dumping and piling on the fat, right? Now let's go in with the flavors. Fresh yes. onions, minced. Now that's not too bad. That's no, good. in fact, that's fiber. It's got many good things. There's right. nothing wrong with any fresh vegetables. Okay, so nice. Here. Here's the celery. And right. look at those two beautiful bell peppers. That's for oh, color. Yes. We have the red bell pepper. And then we have the gorgeous yellow bell pepper. Now, at least it's starting to look like it's good for you here. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah, now, we, good. now we can go in with the herbs. I have sure. a, a little dill right here. Yes. Uh, basil right next to it. Uh, now, herbs, uh, th that's really a good trick for uh, healthier eating is that you can leave the salts off mm -hmm. and all that and just pile on the herbs because Absolutely. that's a really good flavor. So we're doing some good things here and some bad for things. For sure. Now let's go in with the uh, thyme and basil. Yes. Now, we could have chosen to put in a little uh, low-sodium Worcestershire, but instead, we're piling on again. <laughs> it's a little more salt. <laughs> <laughs> Sodium and fat, we're do going in. Now, of course, we're going to go ahead and put in the gelatin, because we have to gel this, mm -hmm. even though there's a little aspic from the fish in it, we're going to uh, gel that. Now, salt, sure, but you have to season things. Yeah. So we have a little salt in here. And how much salt? Well, to taste. So you can put as much as you want. Pepper. Now, what about hot sauce? You can throw some of that in, sure. too. Sure. That's right? actually quite good. That may speed metabolism. You know, when we talk about salt taste in Louisiana, so right. we've got several boxes of salt as <laughs> yeah. we boil crabs. So we tend to overdo salt in a big way. We certainly don't need that much salt. Now, what about the hot sauce? Because the hot sauce is a fermented, yeah. uh, the pepper is fermented in salt. So we have a little yeah. more salt in it. A little bit of salt in it. But by and large, because the flavors are pungent, you don't right. use as much. You don't use as much. That's yes. right. Now, we have all of these great flavors in here. And the catfish that started out beautifully grilled has now been masked in a lot of wonderful flavors, but very, very heavy flavors. Right. So then we mold it, and of course, this is what it looks like when it's done. Right here, I have that nice mold. It went in the refrigerator for about oh, two or three hours to mold nicely, and we would serve this with French bread or croutons. Now, you know what our objective is going to be today, right? Yeah, to do it more healthy. That's <laughs> right. To take that dish and show everybody how to do it just a little, just to modify it a little bit to make it better. And y'all, the grilled mahi mahi was pretty doggone good and healthy, too. I don't know if it was too healthy. I mean, we piled a lot of things on it, didn't we? Hey, Craig, sure. how you doing? Right. Huh? Nice to have you. Nice Thanks. to have you. You know, I, I, I said a minute ago that the, the theme of our show today is going to be we are what we eat. Now, that's some pretty true words, right? Absolutely. I think if we trace out all the major health problems that exist, heart attacks, stroke, cancer, high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, across the list, every single one of them is very closely related to what we eat and how much we eat. So y'all, you heard that? Whatever goes in here, uh, it's your fault. <laughs> Whatever goes in here, you live with the rest of your life, huh? <laughs> but part of what we're doing today, and Craig and I are going to talk a little bit more about that, we are actually going to tell you how we work uh, toward modifying some of those things. So thanks so much for being here. And Tina, nice to have you here as well. What a beautiful smile on the counter here. I like that. And talking about gorgeous smiles on the counter, look over here. <laughs> uh, look at these two guys here talking about beautiful spot. Bob Richard, y'all, a very good chef friend of mine from New Orleans and a guy who represents one of the great veal companies, uh, which I love to use a lot of veal. And then Dan Mobley, right next to him, Louisiana Travel Promotion Association Executive Director. Just arrived here from Washington, y'all. Louisiana boy coming home. Let's give him a hand. Uh, uh, all right. Now, y'all, you saw him. You saw that great grilled fish we were doing a while ago. Take a look back here, huh? You talk about uh, gorgeous grilled fish. Look at the options we have right here on fish. Look at this beautiful red snapper right out of the Gulf of Mexico. Gorgeous. And this right here is our uh, famous red fish, which almost became extinct in Louisiana with blackened red fish right next to it right here. And then, of course, flounder. I think flounder is one of the greatest fish in Louisiana waters. I love it. And then sheep head right next to it, beautiful for grilling. All of these are our grilling choices. And of course, there's hundreds more in the Gulf, in the lakes. We're, we're, we're the wetland state here. And this right here, I've taken some nice uh, re uh, red snapper and I've grilled it over a little pecan wood to give it some smoky flavor. And I'm going to add some claw crab meat and lump crab meat to my mold as well to give it even more flavor. But Rex, take a look at this. Some nice fillets of snapper. And this is what I did. Light, this is just a light 
Italian dressing, separating Italian dressing. And that's how I'm marinating this fish. Of course, you can make your own marinade if you want to. Put some basil and thyme and all of that in it, and you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful marinade there. Uh, but the key is that it's nice and light right there. And y'all, let me introduce Rex. I don't think I introduced Rex to y'all properly, my cameraman here. Uh, Rex is going to be stirring the pots for me today with that uh, fr front of his camera lens. Now, let's start off my fish mold. Now that you know what I have in fish, I'm going to start sauteing, y'all, because when you saute vegetables, and this is a light margarine. Light margarine is about 50% water, right? So it's still fat, but there's a lot of water in it, so you have to throw your vegetables in it quickly to retain some of that uh, liquid, otherwise the water will evaporate right out of the margarine. It's spun in there with high emulsion to keep the water suspended in the fat. So when you use light margarine, you're still using fat, you're just using about half of it in the volume. Now, whenever I modify a recipe, Craig, I put color in it. Color, gorgeous color, because I think if you're going to use uh, any attempt to reduce fat in your diet or sodium or sugar or anything else, pile up the good things, right? Pile up the things that are good for you. What about garlic? Sure, it's great. This will keep, that old, this'll keep <laughs> that old pumper going, OK? Sure. Huh? Now, what about garlic? Isn't garlic supposed to be good for the circulatory system? Certainly some studies suggesting it may be. That, that's not as proven as some of the new medicines, but certainly Shucks. nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Shucks. I've been eating crates of this, y'all. <laughs> no, but I tell you, that uh, uh, at least one thing, it tastes good. That's one of the things that really... Y'all, I should also mention that Dr. Craig Walker is a Louisiana native who attended Harvard University, graduated from the School of Cardiology there, right? Am I right? Or I, just, I did a cardiology fellowship there. Cardiology yeah. fellowship there. And uh, returned home. Now, what brought you home? from Boston. You could have probably gone anywhere in the world, huh? Yeah, yeah, family. Obviously, family and food and fishing and hobbies. Louisiana's a great state, and yeah. uh, when one grows up here, you understand just how great it is. The problem is um, you, you don't know those things until you leave. Then you realize how much you miss family and no, fishing. No, exactly. Well, hey, I'll tell you what, we're happy to have you back. Huh? Happy to have you back. Okay, Rex, you see what I've done here? I've sauteed all of my beautiful vegetables, and look at a gorgeous color. This, look, this looks like Louisiana on Mardi Gras day, y'all. All of that confetti. Oh, and the smell, too, is just fantastic. Now, I'm going to turn that off because in sauteing my vegetables, I'll, I'll pull the sweetness out of them. And Rex, in this bowl right here, you see, I'm, I'm, now we used a lot of mayonnaise in the recipe at your home, but this is a light mayonnaise and a light sour cream, y'all. Light mayonnaise, light sour cream. I'm going to whisk that around just a little bit here to blend the two together. And then I'm going to add a few things to it. I'm going to add some lemon juice, which is always good for you. No fat and sodium here, y'all. Good lemon juice. I'm going to put a little bit of that low sodium Worcestershire sauce down in there. Salt substitute. I'm sticking with the salt substitute. Now, I always come back, when I use salt substitute, I always come back and season the finished dish a little bit with it as well. So I'm going to whisk that around just a fraction. And while that's uh, uh, blending together nicely, I'm going to get my grilled fish and crab meat from the back, and I'm going to add it uh, to this bowl. And, and what I have here, y'all, as I mentioned, is a fish that went on the grill, and you can see that it's all cooked. I can break it apart and throw it right down into my mayonnaise and just blend it in. Now, this is a fish mold, but in Louisiana we have so much seafood, why not enhance it with claw crab meat, which is the sweetest crab meat in the world? Uh, and seafood is pretty uh, low fat, right? Uh, sodium, a fair amount of salt. I guess you have to watch the extra salt when you use uh, too much seafood, but really nice and low fat. Now, that's all gone in there like that. Oh, y'all, I tell you, food fits for God. No wonder you came back home, Craig. <laughs> huh? I tell you what, there's no crab like that in Boston. Hmm? Huh? So, right. <laughs> so I'm going to mix all of this together really nice like this, just kind of blend it together, fold it in, and once I chop the fish in, the, in all of that beautiful uh, uh, seasoning and flavor down there, now, Rex, I'm going to add all that gorgeous stuff in my skillet in here. And y'all, uh, you want to let this cool just a fraction, and put it right down into the pot, just like that, into the bowl, just like that, to get that wonderful color going down into the... Now, you know, again, when you see all of that in the skillet, I mean, in the bowl, you think to yourself, well, this has to be some really good stuff, you know, because all those flavors really shout out because they look so doggone good. Now, a few herbs, basil and uh, parsley in here. I'm putting some tarragon, y'all, and I'm also putting some dill. I love those flavors. 
down into my. Now I would take this. Now how do I keep it together? Well, normally when you grill fish, there's so much natural gelatin in the fish that it forms its own uh, thickening agent. And if you put it in the refrigerator, it's going to certainly gel. But I'm going to help it out here because of the low fat mayonnaise and all of that. I'm going to add just some unflavored gelatin. And unflavored gelatin will really hold this mold together nicely. And then you just pour it once it's all blended nicely. And how much pepper do I put in here, y'all? Plenty pepper. Plenty pepper? You're shouting. You're shouting plenty pepper. <laughs> all right. Well, let me put it. Let me put a little cayenne in there. How about that much? Oh, that's good. oh yeah. Huh? Hey, 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 you shout it, Caesar, Caesar shouts back. Huh? Don't forget that. A little hot sauce in there, y'all. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Now into the mold, y'all. And look, you can put it in one of these molds. Just go ahead and spray the mold really nicely when you're putting it in so that it'll come out. Otherwise, you got to beat it and throw it against the wall and everything else to get it out. But let me show you what it looks like when it's all done. I have it. I have some over here all finished for you, and I tell you, it really looks beautiful. Rex, take a look at that platter right there of the finished mold. And this is a, a fish salad, y'all. So if this is a fish salad, you want it to look like a salad. You notice I have the tomatoes around the outside. You notice I have the beautiful greens. I'm using bib lettuce. This should be a meal right here. This should actually be a meal. It has everything you need. Cut a nice slice out of it, and I put it on the plate with these gorgeous little tomatoes that's available all, all year long in most of the stores. And let me tell you something interesting about this dish. By using the fat-free Italian dressing as the marinade, by using the fat-free mayonnaise, by using the fat-free sour cream, we cut the fat 90% in this recipe, 90% the cholesterol 100%. 100%. So you wow. could bathe in this mold. <laughs> you could take a bath in that mold right there, y'all. Sodium with the low, with the, uh, with the salt substitute, 42% less sodium. So you see, we've gone in the right direction, but we've retained our grilling flavor. We put our lump crab meat in it. We put our claw crab meat, all of our beautiful seasoning. So what did we eliminate? We eliminated a little of the fat, and we bumped up all of the great stuff. So y'all, uh, hey, that's a pretty good little dish there, huh? Uh, Craig, while I get ready to do my next dish, you were telling me about, uh, you were telling me that Louisiana stood out almost like a black dot on the map when you looked at cardiovascular disease, and that really troubled you, and that's when you opened your cardiovascular clinic. Tell me a little bit about why is that? Uh, we, I guess we all what we eat, huh? Absolutely. You know, there are risk factors that have been identified very clearly. They include family history, which we can't do much about, but we tend to be a French, you know, Catholic type right, of, right. of heritage, cigarette smoking, which we have a very high incidence of, high blood pressure, and as we talked earlier, we measure salt in boxes, right. not in grams, <laughs> um, high cholesterol, and the use of saturated fats. And again, many of our foods, which we love, are very full of saturated fats, not just cholesterol, which we all know to be bad, right. but saturated fats are worse than unsaturated fats. And finally, diabetes. We have a very, very high incidence of obesity. Obesity and diabetes are very closely related, so it's epidemic. So all of the things that we're doing here with these modifications of the recipes are really heading in the right direction to, to make people realize that, first of all, you can do it, and it does taste good. For very them. much so. And you know, th that's the key, the second part of this. It's got to taste good. It's got to you know, taste good. Guys will follow a diet for a week or two weeks or three weeks, but after that, they get tired of the diet. No, absolutely. And they want to get back to eating something healthy. And, Part of our goal that we had, we had mentioned in the past was let's educate people, let's make it healthy. Well, and that's what we're doing here, and we appreciate you being here today to help me along with that. You're the expert. Mm -hmm. Bob, did I tell you, by the way, to serve a couple of those little crackers and stuff? Did I, that's, did I tell you to do that? Are you, are you hogging it all for yourself? I'm hogging it all huh? for myself. Come on, John. Bob. No, no. Y'all, Bob just happened to stop by to ah. visit, OK? Huh? There you go. OK, Bob, while you're handing a few of those back right there, and y'all hand them through the audience, I want to know what y'all think about those. OK, let's jump right here, Rex. We're going to start our eggplant beignets. Beignets, y'all, if you've been to New Orleans, the little fried donuts with the powdered sugar, cafe de mon, you know, and you get there with your cafe au lait. Well, hey, we tried to figure out how to use a vegetable in the beignet because that was very famous in Louisiana, the eggplant, the squash beignets in the early days, mixing vegetables because we had a lot of them in our four growing seasons. So in my bowl here, y'all, I have a cup of sugar. Now, 
I'm having a little egg substitute here, y'all. Egg substitute is 99% egg white with a little food coloring in it. So that, uh, that works really well. And it gives the appearance that we have nice heavy egg yolk in here, a lot of nice fat. I think five grams of fat in every egg yolk. And of course, if we eliminated four of those in here, that's 20 grams of fat just in that one move right there. And the egg white will hold everything together. Now, oh, I've got to put a little, a little bit of my... Uh, Vanilla. Vanilla is always steeped. I make homemade vanilla. It's always vanilla being steeped in bourbon or in uh, uh, any kind of a, a whiskey like a, a, a gin or vodka. You two beans and a pint, six months, and I tell you what, you drink this vanilla, you don't care if it's low fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, I put my vanilla in there, y'all, and I stir that around. Now I'm going to put in my baking powder. Now, y'all, my eggplant. And Rex, I want you to take a good look at that beautiful eggplant display I have right behind me there because that eggplant display gives everybody an idea of all the gorgeous eggplant we have to work with in Louisiana. Look at that yellow, white, the purple. Oh, look at that beautiful green and white stripe and violet eggplant. When you see these on the vine, you want to find a way to cook them, y'all. And what I've done, I've taken those eggplant, poached them in a little bit water, Rex, and this is what I have right here. The poached eggplant are nice and tender after they peel, and I'm going to put them down into this egg mixture just like that, and I'm going to stir that in nicely here, and now I'm going to add the flour. Now, the flour becomes the batter, of course, for these fantastic beignets, and I'm going to stir it in a little bit at a time because you really have to blend this in nicely. You can use this in a big, uh, put it in a big mixer too. It might help you work through this. But I like to do it this way because you can crush the eggplant as much as you would like. And I'll put the rest of the flour in here and then a little cinnamon and nutmeg. Again, Craig, flavor in the dish is important, so I'm adding all of that nice stuff to it. So as I blend my batter and I mix it together nicely like that, oh, I tell you, you need a, you need a good friend here to help you whip this stuff together. But I tell you, this would have normally gone into a deep fryer. Talking about saturated fat, in the old days, we'd have gone out into the back porch and got that can of hog lard. Huh? Or we'd have fired up the skillet, y'all. And then I would, uh, uh, I would fry them. But let me show you what I'm going to do today. Uh, isn't that nice? That's better than nice. Oh, that's better than nice. <laughs> y'all, look, my nice, uh, my nice little grill. I have me some vegetable spray here. And I'm going to take my beignets, oh, I have here, take my beignets, I'm going to take a little scoop like this right onto the grill. Now the vegetables, y'all, oh, you, you ought to smell this clove and cinnamon. And what I'm going to do, I think you have the general idea, once this starts to come to a nice little uh, start to simmer here, you just kind of uh, push it down on the grill, and you're going to see how fast they brown. See, uh, now I can push them flat and they're going to sit here and just turn nice and golden brown. You can see how nice that is right there. And let me show you that platter right behind you, Rex. See this? Oh, y'all, this is what they look like. Huh. Little blueberry on here. Egg substitute, y'all. Egg substitute in this dish, 91% fat-free, 91% less fat, and 100% less cholesterol. Oh, brown sugar. I mean, white sugar. <laughs> Beautiful, y'all. Now let's look at my coconut cake. My old time coconut cake. This was the original wedding cake of Louisiana, y'all. The original wedding cake. The fact that I use light margarine, egg substitute. Light margarine, egg substitute, and evaporated skim milk, y'all. Evaporated skim milk, 74% less fat in this gorgeous coconut cake, 98% less cholesterol. And you still have a gorgeous old fashioned coconut cake. And Look at my spinach casserole. My spinach casserole, look at that. I'm going to just take this out of here. Add any vegetable or seafood to this, y'all. Artichoke, shrimp, crab meat. I made it with light margarine, fat-free cottage cheese, egg substitute. I cut the fat 74%. Cholesterol, 98%. And, low, uh, and I used the salt substitute, so I have 50% less sodium. Y'all, I want to know who says mama's cooking can't be healthy. Huh? Nobody, right? Nobody. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, great to have y'all. <laughs> nice to have y'all. We're going to serve every single one of you some of these good dishes, and Bob's going to help me. Craig, thanks so much for being here. Very, very nice. Thank y'all. Hey, hey, hey.
She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana, Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fultz's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order.